Okay then, so now we can create new books from the application. Next up, I wanna display all the books on the homepage. So then we need a way to fetch all the book hashes and format them into some kind of array of objects so we can map through them all and output them in the template. Now, this means we need to do two things. First, we need to figure out all the keys for the different book hashes stored in Redis because all the IDs in the keys are random. We don't really know them ahead of time. Second, we need to get each one of those hashes from Redis individually and put them into an array, which involves multiple separate requests to Redis, really, one for each hash. And that's where pipelines are going to come into good use. But to begin with, I want to tackle the first task, figuring out all the keys for the different book hashes. Now, we can do that pretty easily thanks to the sorted set we used in the last lesson. Remember, a sorted set contains a collection of members and an associated score for each member. Now the member was the book title and the score was the ID of that book. So what we could do is just fetch the scores of all the members inside that sorted set. And that way we'd be able to easily make up the keys for each book because each book has a key of books, then a colon, then the ID for that book, right? So let's do that. I've got a function here in the home component called get books, which is going to get all the books from Redis. I've also imported the client object from the DB file we set up to connect to Redis. So we've got everything we need. So let's grab all those scores to begin with. We can do that by saying const result is equal to await client. And then we're going to use a method on the client called Z range with scores, right? Now this method gets us a range of members with their scores from a sorted set. Remember we used Z for sorted sets. So in this method, we pass in the key of the sorted set, which is just books, and then two more arguments, both numbers, which define the range. We want to go from the start to the end to get them all. So we can say from zero to minus one, which is the last value. Now the Redis client library formats this for us in such a way that it gives us an array of objects that looks like this, where each object has a value, which is the member name, the book title, and a score, which is the ID we need for that book. So that's what we're getting back from Redis, right? And the node Redis client. So now we're gonna know all the book IDs and we need to use them then to fetch each individual book. And this is where pipelines in Redis is gonna help us out. So currently we have this array which contains all the IDs, the score remember, of the different books. So we could then cycle through that array, through each book to get each book ID, and then send a fresh command to Redis for each book using that ID. And that would look something like this, a bunch of H get all commands sent one after another to Redis, and then we'd have to wait for each individual book to come back separately. But instead of that, it would be nice if we could batch all the commands up together, send them to Redis, and then Redis can send all the results, all the books back in one go. And this is the idea behind pipelines. So a pipeline is just a way to issue a bunch of Redis commands to the Redis server at once, and then get the results of those commands back together. And it increases performance, as well as being easier to manage from the client. So the way we manage pipelines using the node Redis client library is to wrap an array of commands inside promise.all. And then those commands are gonna be lined up and then issued to Redis and we'll then get a single result back from Redis, which the client library will then format for us into an array of objects, each one representing a single book hash in our case. So let's do this. Let's say const books is equal to await promise.all. And then inside here, we'd pass through an array of Redis commands. Now, the easiest way to do this in our case is to take the results array, which contains all of the IDs, remember, and map that to a new array of commands inside promise.all. So we can say result.map right here, and then this map function takes a function as an argument, which returns the new array element that we're gonna to map to. And the function takes in as an argument, the current element of the array we're cycling through, we're iterating, which I'm gonna call B for book. And remember, on that object, we have the value and the score properties. So now for each book, we want to return a Redis command in this new array. And to do that, we can just say return client.h get all 
to get all the key value pairs from a hash and then pass in the key for that hash. Now, the keys for book hashes are books, then a colon, and then the book ID. So I'm going to use template strings to say books, colon, and then output a variable, so dollar sign and curly braces, and then access the ID from the score property of the book. So we say b.score to get that. And that now gives us the full key for each book. So now we have this array of commands inside promise to all, which are going to get sent then to Redis. And then in return, we're going to have an array of book objects now, where each object is a hash that we got from Redis. And all we need to do now is return those books inside this function so that we can use them inside the React component and output them in the template. So then we need to invoke this function get books down inside the React component. So we'll say const books is equal to await get books. And we can use await because this is asynchronous right here. Okay, so we have the books and now we want to output them here instead of this paragraph tag. So curly braces and then say books dot map. So we map through the books and we fire a function for each individual book where we take that book and we return a bit of template inside parentheses for each one. So I'm going to paste this template in to save me writing this out from scratch. Now in next or react components, each surrounding element inside a return template right here needs to have a unique key property. Now we know that the title is unique because when we added the book, we checked in the sorted set if that title already existed and we didn't create a new hash if it did. So we know the title is unique so we can use it as the key and we get that from the book right here. So we say book.title because remember, this is a JavaScript object which represents now that hash for a book in Redis. So we output the title right here inside the key, give it a class name of card as well to style it. Then inside we have an H2 for the title. So we say book.title book.author below that in a paragraph tag, then book.blurb, and then finally book.rating at the bottom. So hopefully now this should all work. So remember again, we're getting all the scores right here inside an array of objects. So each object represents a member inside that sorted set where we have the value and the score, and the score is the ID. So we're getting back all the IDs inside that sorted set, and we're storing that in result. Then we're mapping through this array right here, and we're returning a Redis command, hgetall, for each individual ID right here. And we're passing that ID into the key to get that individual hash. So right here, this is going to basically be, at the end of it, an array of different commands, which we pass into promise to all, which is how we pipeline commands using Node Redis. And when we pipeline those commands, it's going to send us one big result back, which the Node Redis client library is going to format for us into an array of JavaScript objects where each object represents a book hash it returned for us. So then we return them, we access them inside the component, then we map through them to output some template for each one. I hope that will make sense. So let's preview this now in the browser. All right then, so now we can see those books on the home page. I'm going to just try adding one more new book as well. So let's click add a new book to do that. And the title is going to be the name of the wind. And then the author is Patrick Rothfuss. Can I spell it? Yep, just about. Rating nine, blurb, whatever. Um, and then let's add this book. Fingers crossed. We're going to get that book on the homepage as well. Yes, we do. Awesome. So there we have it, my friends. Now we're showing all the books on the homepage as well.